but also is it what I want? You know, there, there may be some people that want to figure out what that means, but that's not I mean, my grandparents and my immigration history and what they've gone through and the cultural kind of uh -huh. realities I bring into the world mean too much to me for somebody to say, yeah, but I don't see any of that. And it's yeah. a sure sign of privilege. If you can avoid talking <laughs> yes. about race, then you know you're privileged. You know you're privileged yes. when you yeah. can. I, and I it's, try to tackle the privilege thing in the book as as with as well as possible to kind of push on that a little bit. Yeah, you're right. I appreciate so, so what you like say, though, that privilege isn't necessarily a bad thing. People, Some people are so guilty about their sense of privilege that they get burdened by it and they don't do anything. But you recognize that there's there are positive aspects. It, it isn't necessarily inherently bad. Right. And I think if you ignore it, that's where you buy right into what privilege does. That, you know, it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just the cycle continues as opposed to really examining what that privilege means and what it does and how you move and shift and have the, the real gift to be able to do that. I think it's uh, uh, it's really important. Yeah, and we certainly live through a complexity in the United States, right? Because this is one of the few places uh, in the planet where there's been an intentional endeavor to mix up people's uh, ethnic and, uh, and heritage and racial backgrounds, right? I mean, there's a few other places, but the United States has really endeavored in this quite aggressively, and we're all trying to figure out how to do this, right? I mean, it's a little, it's a little unusual for the, for, for the human experience that human beings, and at least I, I think as, as evolutionary uh, uh, creatures, um, did better by tribal sort of sensibilities. These people are safe. These people aren't. And we're going to, you know, pal up with the people who are safe so we can go to war against the people who aren't. And humanity wants to grow beyond that. We don't want to live in that kind of typical tribal frust frustrated uh, world before. And so in, in the United States, you know, 100 years ago, the category of immigration built around race had to do with separating people from different what we would now call European traditions. Right. So like our quota system of who you allow in the United States used to say, like, we have to be careful that there's not too many Germans, mm -hmm. That's right. that there's not too many Scots. Those, those Italians and, are coming in. And the yeah. Italians are coming in. <laughs> oh, and boy. now we clump all those a bunch of those people together. Right. So I mm -hmm. live in Minnesota. Victoria does, too. And, mm -hmm. and so does Quincy. Um, and here there used to be big arguments between the Scandinavian traditions. Yes. Right. The, Those the Norwegians, Swedes, and Swedes, Norwegians and the there Finns. There still are, Doug. They, still. It's I mean, still like, going on. Right. And so someone to me who's not Norwegian or Swedish is just like, I don't know, let's just call them all Scandinavian and make it the same. And now there's a little joke every once in a while at mm -hmm. a wedding. If a uh, and Olsen marries a Swenson, you know, and these people think <laughs> this, this stuff's hilarious. It used to cause Romeo and Juliet kind <laughs> and, uh, of feuds. It really <laughs> did. And I'm imagining that for your parents, a Filipino tradition person and a Chinese background person, to marry whenever your parents did after the 1940s in the Northern California area, that must have been potentially scandalous. Yeah, you know, and I uh, again, I talk a little about this kind of in the, the degrees of uh, uh, of skin color that that happen in all cultures and judgments around mm -hmm. that i mean uh you know i a relative told me that the the closer to gold the closer to, to the, the closer to gold the closer to, to oh, heaven yikes. and, and that you know oh. the lighter your skin you know i i think when my um uh mom was involved with my dad and that, that family side. I've heard great stories. My, I love my grandmother. She has mellowed out tremendously over the years, but she used to only speak Chinese when my mom walked into the house. Oh dear. Um, and my grandmother speaks fine English. So your um, mom is Filipino. And my mom is when Filipino. you're, when she would walk into the house of the person she was dating or newly married to who's Chinese, your grandma would speak in Chinese. Chinese. So she couldn't yeah. to like point out the fact that we're Chinese and you're not. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It was very well, and it wow. even goes to I have some my my family, my Chinese side is from southern China, and I had some oh. uh, a, a good friend from northern China who uh -oh. now lives in Minnesota, in Minneapolis actually, oh. and you know it was one of those things where I'd say I'd have to say Grandma, he's from northern China, he speaks Mandarin, and she would you know this was later on she would you could see her internal organs kind of going okay, I know that's supposed to be okay, but. Okay, I guess I can handle having a northern Chinese person come into Isn't my house. So I mean, you know, it, it really is. And, and a lot of folks, well, what's the big deal? Well, there's so much history. You know, you look at yes. Japanese and Filipino culture. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I think it's it's been all around. And now I'm married. I'm married to a white woman. My my mom is married to a, a white man, and 
yesterday was uh, the decision on on loving and interracial marriage. And so a lot of us are talking about even that reality uh, wasn't allowed to be uh, yeah. until mm-hmm. recent. So. Mm-hmm. And, and so how do you talk about this with your daughters, Bruce? Um, do they see themselves as um, having an Asian heritage or background or a race? Um, you know, if they're uh, if their mom is Scottish. Yeah. Um, do uh, they see themselves both of those? Do they pick one? Do they do it based on how they're socially, yeah, constructually received? Every, every once in a do? while, uh, Robin, uh, my wife, will say, you know, you are part white, too. <laughs> 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 but I, you know, I, 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 the joke is the Reyes genes uh, are very strong in both melanin and in personality. So, mm-hmm. uh, so my, my kids identify, uh, you know, I think they identify as mixed depending on where they are. And it is interesting, though, there are some, uh, you know, for instance, Filipinos that have said to uh, my, my daughter, you're not Filipino enough. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm pretty wow. Filipino. You know, I, and like, what does that even mean? So yeah, what does I, that mean? I, uh-huh. I think they're learning how to navigate the complexities of being biracial or even, you know, multiracial, multiracial. in the world today uh, pretty well. And they can sit in a Filipino context and a Chinese context and a, in a larger white context. And I think they navigate all of that um, as a generation, I hope, will continue to learn to do, especially when they grow up in it. I think mm-hmm. some folks who don't grow up in it are may may not handle the same way, but um, I think we're we're trying to just talk about race is is complex, and you're not just Filipino, you're not just Chinese, you're not white, you're all these things, mm-hmm. and you're also a young woman, you're also this and this and this, and you got to mm-hmm. kind of figure out how all those things and, play together. And do, and do you see it as a struggle that there's kind of a generation of people, uh, maybe young, you know, maybe, maybe uh, elementary school age and so on, for whom the normative experience in their life is going to be people from a variety of backgrounds where your race isn't the first identifier in your life. It, does that feel to some people who are engaged in the in the cultural and racial conversation in the United States? Does that feel like somehow an opportunity is going to be missed and some systemic bias in our culture is going to be? Um, sort of uh, left left in place by 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 sort of benign neglect. Yeah, I, I think I think that is that's a problem that happens. I think the generation that was raised by the civil rights movement, uh, we can fall into that trap greatly to kind of think, gosh, mm-hmm. it's it's so much better than it was before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, look at you know, I think sometimes churches can get into those modes. Other organizations that feel like the blatant violent racism that we saw so much before isn't as visible so we don't have to talk about it mm-hmm. um, and I and I would have until maybe even just six months ago um, I was a little more optimistic about that about the next generation of, of people talking about race yes. and then, what what happened six months ago well well you know I mean, not even six months ago now a few months ago when um, the Is uh, it the commercial the, the, no well there was commercial stuff but there was the Boston bombing so I guess that's only yeah. a month and a half ago. Um, and following the Twitter feeds around the the oh. bombings that happened at the marathon, um, and the, the the incredibly racist rhetoric that was being thrown around as if that didn't matter, and it was it, because it's a group that is easily targeted and doesn't really have social capital in the United States around the around Middle Eastern folks and and then the specific groups. I think that mm-hmm. was a, a real wake up for me. The other piece was uh, huh. during the Olympics a couple years ago when the uh, um, U.S. the women's team where our yes. family is a big uh, women's soccer house, and uh, when they were playing Korea, hmm. and uh, all the rhetoric about they all look the same and all the racial kinds of things that came out during that mm-hmm. by a lot of young people. And so I think what has happened is that we feel like we've gotten so far beyond something that we can now revert back to language that is dehumanizing and is end up breaking, breaking us mm-hmm. down again. Mm-hmm. And so I think there has to be some fortitude and conviction by many of us across the generations to continue to have conversations, huh. mm-hmm. to shift the vernacular. I mm-hmm. think that has to change, but to still realize that as long as people are born new into the world, new lenses uh, are going to have to be developed. And, and it's not like once we solve something, the baby that's born 10 years later already knows that. Mm-hmm. And I think we continue, you know, gender, sexuality, all of these things, physical mm-hmm. ability. We have to continue to talk about these things because every generation is 
learns and teaches throughout their life. Huh, interesting. Uh, and, if, yeah. and if we forget that, then we, we calcify society and culture. And that then we buy into the idea that this whole social experiment of multiculturalism and diversity has failed. And I, I just don't think it has. I think it's wonderful, but it requires mm. a lot of work. And this is why we need to make room for more voices and try to look outside of just our immediate network of people, right? So that so that these kinds of different perspectives and awareness can be made available to one another because yeah. that's part of the battle is awareness, right? I have two transracially adopted children as well, and it's been quite shocking to me sometimes being out with them in the world, the kinds of um, even really subtle uh, mm -hmm. racism that I am not used to encountering mm -hmm. as a as a pale, you know, not much melanin kind of person with two browner people and different kinds of brown from different places. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty abhorrent to me. And I, I don't mind, I guess, so much for myself. I'm a grown up. I can I can deal with it. I have Teflon. But it really hurts when you're bringing up people that you realize you're putting them huh. in this world that doesn't seem to make room for them in the way that they should have room. And so all of us need to try to clear, I think, some real estate in our hearts and minds and in our lives for more room for more people to try to understand one another. And Bruce, I know you can't comment on all on all uh, issues related to, you know, the complexity of race uh, in, in the sure world. I could. But um, <laughs> come on. Uh, but but, you know, there's this question that the Victoria's circumstance uh, uh, reminds me of and that in the United States, there's this this question in the Supreme Court about the appropriateness of affirmative action. Yeah. And there's an argument made by some people that would say when you use affirmative action and make uh, additional spaces available for people based on racial categories, you are thereby being the racist. So yeah. w how does one do what Victoria is wanting and suggesting is such a good idea to create more space for the other and then at the same time hear people saying like, don't see me as the other. How, right. how do I? How does one do that, right? And uh, in, come on, Bruce, fix it. Yeah, in an this appropriate where, way. Or do you just have to do it? This is kind of where white people's brains begin to explode, right? I mean, because <laughs> this is my reality, right? Every day, yeah. I live in both otherness and non-otherness. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I think it's it, it really becomes hugely contextual. And, and, I'll, and let me talk about just the affirmative action piece for me. San Francisco is very interesting, right? We're, we're almost majority Asian American. Um, and a, a few years ago, our district, school district, public school district was sued because our top high school um, was using – race as a, a way to decide who would get into this highly academic, uh, top ranked high school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it became, uh, you know, highly Asian. Yeah. And so that no longer became math scores uh, must've been through the roof. It, it was, it was huge. Right. I mean, there was and the no, Kung Fu skills and the Chinese food. Well, let me tell you that I don't know martial arts and I flunk calculus. So I do that on purpose. <laughs> that's what people just, mean when they're not. Yeah. That's uh, that's why I'm not a good Asian. Um, but you know what, what happened was it became this when, when uh, race stopped um, helping uh, a particular group and it was, and it was going to help say African-American folks or Latino folks. It, it split the Asian American community greatly, mm. right? There were some that said, hey, wait a minute. No, now we need to be strictly blind admission. No, race doesn't matter. Economics doesn't matter. It's just your test scores in middle school that get you in. Others were saying, well, hey, we can't be just because we got ours. Now screw the rest of you. Yeah. We have to continue to begin thinking about who is the other in our context in, in the midst of this place. Mm -hmm. And that, so I think that illustrates the fact that there is no right or wrong i think that for me i'm i'm a person that believes you know we need to maybe change the affirmative action because it has so much language but there is mm -hmm. something about bringing folks in together in an institution of yeah. higher learning especially that um you know i think uh it, it it only encourages and enhances this as we talked about before this experiment this social reality that the united states has committed to and if we don't do that, then we've decided that actually diversity is bad. Hmm. And there are many people that believe that. I mean, I think I was just hmm. looking at the at the other books in the category that might listed on Amazon and shocked at some of the right. stuff that is written out there. Uh -oh. Right. This this has failed. We have become a black privileged country. Hmm. 
and you know, I read that and I'm like, wow, where does that come from? And mm-hmm. then you see how fighting some of the, you know, why this conversation is so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And there are going to be no easy answers to it because we're so diverse. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, I really wouldn't. And oh, when, when things, ch- oh, I can't ask, can I? Yeah, you can ask. When things <laughs> turn, when things turn nasty, sometimes I notice that it seems like people are fighting about how to talk about it and mm. get mm-hmm. off center from how do we try to figure out how to live together. Do you have anything for us to offer and what what to do when it seems like things have got really gone south in a conversation or a community? What what do we do to try to shift things into a more mm. affirming kind of conversation. Yeah, and I think it really depends on where and what happens and what's going on and you know is it is it workplace, is it family, is it mm-hmm. school, is it you know faith community, is it you know local community or whatever. So I think it, that really varies, but you know I it really is based on do I see another person as a human being? Um my mother uh who I I both love and hate when she kind of pushes on stuff. I, I hate, for instance, the New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. Really? It's the only, it's the only time I allow my children to, to use the word hate, uh, to yell somebody sucks in public with <laughs> a whole mob of people. Does it's, that it's make okay. you a good or bad Asian? Uh, how do, how does exactly, that, where does it, it put depends, you? Depends, the New York Asians think I'm totally sold out. Right. So, <laughs> uh, but my mother, whenever I say, Oh, I hate that A-Rod guy, or I hate Jeter, blah, blah, she says, he has a mother too. Mm. Oh, and I'm like, whatever. You know, well, I hate her too. <laughs> I hate her too. Yeah, and, exactly. and all of this. Thanks, evil mom. I forgot. Yeah. I was going to leave it. I was going to leave it just to him. You're right. So you know. So I think there is an element of if you're going to engage in this, and especially if you're one who feels moved, compelled to help instigate these conversations that are going to be better. We we have to model a sense of graciousness to the other and a model a sense of human dignity to the other. Now, that doesn't mean weakness. It doesn't mean rolling over. It doesn't mean walking away because it's too hard. It just means that as I engage with you, I will always take you seriously. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get violent and you get, you know, you just go too far, then then I, I reserve the right to disengage mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. and protect kind of safety and those kinds of things. But for the most part, a vast majority of my interactions that are are negative, I think are are in many ways brought to some closer connection when I can say, I hear why you would think that way. Mm-hmm. I, I I get why it, it feels this way. I I really do. And let's keep talking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well the book is called uh, But I Don't See You as an Asian Cultivating or Curating Conversations About Race. Bruce, who do you um who who do you hope reads the book and who do you um who who do you uh, think it would be really, really great for? Is it a, a person, yeah. individuals, g- collectives, g- book groups? I think it's going to be both. I this, I was asked this question before. Originally, I'd said, oh, this would be a great small group book. But then as I've read it and people have talked with me about it, I think what I hope is, is I mean, if I had to pick a couple, three groups, for instance, one, it's going to be individuals who are going to read it. And the next time something happens, they're going to be equipped a little better to respond or react mm-hmm. or even their inclination to say something is going to be... Uh, uh, filtered a little bit more. I yep. think that that's a, an individual. And then I think this would be a, a great book for a freshman read or an orientation, give it to a high school senior who's headed to maybe a cultural reality in college or nice. a new town for work that is very different. And then I think it is going to be groups who want to be given permission by a third party, a book to talk about race in, in, a, in a little different way than I think we have been in the past. Mm. Well, that's fantastic, Bruce. Thanks, uh, th- thanks so much. And uh, and uh, Bruce is also going to be part of the Church Planters Academy because Bruce does other things in his life too. He's a uh, a church innovator and a uh, person who who uh, wants to uh, also curate the formation of new kinds of uh, Christian communities in the world. So, uh, in August at churchplantersacademy dot com, you can find uh, information about Bruce being one of the presenters there. Um, Bruce, thanks a lot. Anything else you want to? I, I, by, by the way, are you a runner? Well, we had this whole conversation before we launched into the show. Are you a runner or a cyclist? I can't remember. <laughs> Good you, Lord, are you, no. Are you, are you either of those? You're neither of those. I couldn't no. remember. All right. I am a walker that's, of the dog. That's no. <laughs> so do runners and cyclists yell at you or not at all? Or how, where do you that's fall That's right. That's that? right. Who, you... who, who yells at you then? Because runners get well, yelled at by cyclists and cyclists get yelled at by, do other by walkers car drivers. Yell at you? 
who, we don't, who we don't yells yell at, at dog walkers? In San Francisco. We're so calm. Oh, and, oh I bet. You know. <laughs> I bet you are. You just run them over. All right. <laughs> exactly. That's, uh, exactly. We have a protest every day for it's for something. So, you know, we're all yelling at each other. <laughs> hey, Bruce, thanks a lot. That's Bruce Race Chow. Right. Uh, hey, and, and the, the book is available in, in a print edition, but also a, a Kindle edition. And I bought it today for 99 cents. You did. And that deal is, I think, of what I've heard has already ended. So I'm self-publishing oh. and, and kick-started this project. And that's a whole other thing. But uh, I accidentally changed it to 99 cents last night while I was doing some things. <laughs> Boom. It was not intentional. <laughs> Boom. Uh, well, I owe you 10 bucks. Uh, but yeah, you know, it means it gets out there. I'm going to I'm gonna spin it as a savvy uh, marketing move. Hey, let's call it yeah, a Dyke yeah. Padger radio promotion. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Five for 99 cents. Uh, you, exactly. have, you, have you changed that already or do you want to flip it? Yeah, it already it's got done. switched. I changed it this morning. And right. usually it takes a long time for the switch to happen. But my sense is Kindle said, oh, they're up the price. We're going to change it now. Yeah. Oh, isn't that interesting? Well, thanks for, thanks for writing the book, Bruce, and thanks for being on. It's really, really helpful. Hey, thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks a lot, Bruce. T- talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Yeah, there's that Bruce Race Chow. I like that guy. Yeah. Yeah, you I like, like that guy? I too. I'm yeah. excited that he's uh-huh. going to be in Minneapolis. He's going to be in Minneapolis. Soon. So if you want to spend a little time with Bruce. Well, I don't know if he wants to spend time with planters. me, but I'd like that. Maybe come. I could just hang around by him like a little. like a little. Yeah, you probably should, but don't make it creepy. A groupie? Don't, 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 don't make it awkward. <laughs> like a don't hype girl? Don't be like girl? hanging around. Can I be, Bruce, can I be your hype girl? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> being a, being a weird or something. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to be back here uh, after the break with uh, our, uh, our right on segment and, um, and Ben Yunan. An Egyptian. Woohoo! I don't, see, I'm not supposed to, I don't know if been. I'm supposed to mention that he's an Egyptian or not. I'm, I'm totally I don't know. I, well, an Egyptian let's just go for it and anyway. see what happens. Yeah, right. So, uh, so stick with us here, Doug Padger Radio. We're going to be back uh, after the break, um, and uh, and stick with us. 